A battle of top 10 teams in Seattle. UConn number two, Gonzaga number eight. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you here on CBSSports.com. It's our college basketball previews as we head into a doubleheader weekend on CBS, and it's great games all across the board, four of them. Take a look at the doubleheader Saturday on CBS. It all gets started at 2 p.m. Eastern with another top 10 battle, Xavier and Duke from the IZOD Center in New Jersey. The rest of you will see Michigan State and Texas in Austin, UConn Gonzaga, and of course, opposite that, Davidson and Purdue. But let's break down the battle of the Huskies and the Bulldogs. And to help me do that, we bring in CBS College Sports' Steve Lapis to break it down. And uh, Steve, these two teams met last year in Boston. Gonzaga got the victory. Hashim Thabit rather ineffective. He had six points, five boards, and fouled out of the ballgame. How crucial is that for Gonzaga again to make him uh, a non-factor in this ballgame? It would be crucial if they could make him a non-factor. I don't think they're going to be able to, not because they're not a great team, but because of his maturity. I think he comes out and plays big. He's averaging 14 and a half points, 12 rebounds. He's one of the leading block, uh, shot blockers in the country. You have to think that he's going to come out as a different kid this year than he did last year at this time. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. The other part of it is he has Jeff Adrian. So as a as a duo in the front court, UConn is very stout. Now, last week when we talked about Gonzaga, Steve, we discussed them being very good in the front court as well. But in that loss to Arizona, they didn't shoot very well. Uh, how much of a problem could that be again this weekend against UConn's front court? Well, I think one of the reasons that this is going to be, I think, one of the top five games in college basketball this season is because both teams have so many different weapons. They both have both teams have multiple double figure scores so they don't rely on any one guy. Now they didn't shoot the ball well last week. I think that bodes well for, the, for them to shoot the ball this week especially since every guy that plays for Gonzaga in their top seven can all make a three point shot. So I think that's one of the things that makes them so good is they have a lot of different weapons as does UConn. That's why even though both teams are playing very good defense the people have not Gonzaga over the years. They're not a great defensive team. They're holding people to 34% shooting right now and 29 from three. So I think it's going to be a great game because of the different weapons that both teams have. And you can't knock them for their schedule either because they've played some great teams uh, in neutral sites as well. And technically, this will be another neutral site in Seattle, though obviously it'll be a uh, Gonzaga-friendly crowd. Now, you're talking about weapons. Jeremy Pargo, the point guard for Gonzaga, uh, great in the game last year against UConn, but he had seven turnovers in the loss to Arizona last weekend. Does he have to be the key? He's one of the keys, but I mean, that's a fluke that game in Arizona. Here's a kid who's got almost a five to one assist to turnover ratio, one of the best in America, and he turns the ball over like that last week. I think you can expect Jeremy Pargo, at least from a floor general standpoint, to play a very, very good game against Connecticut. Now, Connecticut is a very good defensive team. They can put pressure on you, but Pargo's experienced, and I can't see him putting up two back-to-back -back -back clinkers like he did at Arizona last week. What about the guys playing opposite him uh, for you? UConn, their backcourt, is a, it's a duo now at the point guard position, A.J. Price and Kemba Walker. Well, first of all, if it wasn't for Samard or Sham Samuels at Louisville, Kemba Walker would have a shot at being the rookie of the year. He probably still does. So he's been a great freshman point guard, and he is a true point guard, which is something UConn needs. A.J. Price had a great year last year, but he's more of a combination guard. He has struggled this year. Now, this kid's coming back from ACL injury. He, he got in the NCAA tournament against San Diego last year, so he's been a little slow coming around. He's their sixth leading scorer right now, which is not something you would have expected from A.J. Price. But Kemba Walker, this kid can run the show, and what happens is he leads UConn, especially in their transition game. And UConn, as always for Jim Callum's teams, are at their best when they're running up and down. Yeah, Kemba Walker has been very impressive so far at the beginning of the season. Steve, give me the key to the game, and who's your winner? Well, I think the biggest key to this game is going to be how well UConn is able to take care of the ball. If they go to Seattle on a neutral court, as you say, and they take care of the ball and play sound, I think UConn comes away with a big win. All right, we'll see how it all plays out 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Steve Lapis, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, folks, for more on this game or any other on CBS or, of course, all over the nation, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.